So I was able to score a couple great deals on hard drives over this Black Friday holiday season. And that means we can now finish up our series on building your own NAS. Now, if you haven't seen the first part, don't worry, it's linked down below where I walk you through all the different hardware that I chose and I walk you through the actual process of putting it all together to build your NAS box. But now we face one of the most important decisions and that is which software are you gonna pick to power your NAS? Now there are a lot of different options out there but I'm gonna only give you the two top dogs in my opinion, Team Blue and Team Orange. In terms of managing your drives and creating storage arrays, they both have that functionality and they both have functionality to duplicate your data, but they also have other functionality as well. And that's the ability to add applications via containerization, typically through Docker. What that means is you can not only use this as a storage device, but you can also use it to host applications like you would on any other server. And lastly, they both have built-in hypervisors. And that simply means that you're gonna be able to quickly spin up virtual machines. Now I don't recommend using it for virtual machines unless it's the only thing you have. They're just not as good as some other options that are out there, even the ones for free. In this video, we're gonna focus more on the storage options and touch a little bit on the applications. But most importantly, we're gonna walk through the differences between each of these so that you understand which one is right for your particular situation. On the Team Blue side, it's the 800 pound gorilla, True NAS. On the Team Orange side, well, that's the newcomers, Unraid. And before we get into all the details and specifics between the two, there's one decision that you can make up front and that you need to know and be aware of. And that is if you are planning a storage array that has different sized drives, your only option is to use Unraid. If you are in a situation that you have all of the same size drives, well, then you can use TrueNAS or Unraid. That's because on the TrueNAS side, we're actually using a true RAID environment, but on the unraid side, we're not using a RAID environment. So if you do have all the same size drives, and I actually recommend you might want to consider having the same manufacturer and the same make drives, just going to make things run a lot smoother on the TrueNAS side. TrueNAS has been around for quite some time. They actually have three different offerings, two free community editions in TrueNAS Core and TrueNAS Scale. They also have an enterprise edition that they sell to corporations and industry for larger deployments. In full disclosure, I've only used TrueNAS Core. It's not that I have anything against the newer TrueNAS scale, but I'm just partial to TrueNAS Core and I know it's super solid. I have two machines that I've been running over five years that both have TrueNAS Core on them and I've had no issue. Now, I'm not gonna go into details about the differences between the two. I know that TrueNAS Scale is built on Linux and TrueNAS Core is actually built on something we call FreeBSD. If you're interested in some of those details and how they're different, you can check out the links down below. Both editions all use RAID and ZFS, hence the requirement that all your drives have to be the same size. ZFS has been around for a long time and is really trusted in the industry that it uses physical RAM for its cache. Now that can be really good because that's super speedy and a lot quicker than looking for data on a spitting hard drive. But as you might conclude, well, if you want to have a bigger cache, well, then you're going to actually have to physically update by adding more RAM to the system. And unfortunately, we can't set priority where we can say, keep this data in cache per se. That's all done programmatically and chronologically. There are many more benefits, but I want to keep this short. One of the things I want to touch on is the ability to do snapshots. And this simply means that you can take an image of what's on those drives at any given time. And you can use that to roll back to if let's say you have some type of corruption in the future. Now you shouldn't look at this as backup, nor should you even look at RAID as backup, but these should be pieces of your backup strategy. But if you find yourself in the situation that I'm in, where you have a bunch of different drives of a bunch of different sizes, well, you're in luck. That's where Unraid comes in. Unraid, because it's using different technology to handle its duplication or replication, it's using something we call parity. And what that means is you're gonna set one of your drives in your storage array as the parity drive, and that's basically gonna 
to control all of that replication and duplication across the other drives. The other unique thing is you're going to set one drive as your cache file. And this means that it's really easy to expand this. And even if you have to add, let's say another, let's say NVMe drive, like I did, you can actually use that full drive, let's say a terabyte, and that could be your cache file. Now that's not going to be as fast as something like uh, we see over on the TrueNAS side when they're pulling it from RAM, but it's a lot cheaper to upgrade and it's a lot easier to expand or even shorten if you don't need that much cash. There are some downsides though. This is not an open source product like that on the TrueNAS side. This is actually a paid product. It is built on top of Linux, but its core is closed down. So if you're like someone that likes to know what's going on under the hood, deep down in the trenches, well, you're not gonna be able to get to at the core. Now this can be a positive in a sense that it's probably a bit more secure, but it also could be a negative for those folks that wanna maintain some of that control and the last one can either be a positive or negative depending on how you look at it you actually have to install unraid on a usb drive you can't put it on a hard drive so where the downsides are there is usb drives have more of a tendency to get corrupted than other types of drives where it could be an upside, like in my case, I can now boot off a USB drive and I can free up one of my NVMe drives to use as that cache drive. So because I am in a mixed drive environment, my hand is kind of forced, I have to use Unraid. Now I'm not disappointed in this, I've been wanting to test drive Unraid for quite some time now, so I'm super amped to see what it's all about. But if I'm completely honest with you before we begin, if I did have all the same size drives, and especially if I had all the same make and model, well, I would definitely be using TrueNAS Core. But because that's not the case, we're gonna move forward and test drive Unraid. So the first thing you wanna do is head over to unraid.net, and we're actually gonna take a minute to look at their pricing model. They have three different options. They have the starter option. That is $49, and that's gonna allow you to attach up to six storage drives. It's going to give you one year of support. You can move up if you need unlimited drives on your system for 109, you can get that license. That's also gonna come with one year of support. You can move up to lifetime, and that's gonna give you the license and lifetime support. If you want to add on support to either the starter or unleashed after the first year, it's an additional, I think it's 30, $36 per year. So recognize that using this model, you're going to have a one-time fee and perhaps if you want ongoing support an ongoing fee to use the software to manage your NAS. So as long as you're aware of that and you're good with that, all you need to do is come over here is either buy it or hit free trial. Once you come here, you just simply need to download this application. Once you get that downloaded, just go ahead and hit the AXE if you're on Windows. They also have a downloader for Mac. Just open that up and install the program. Once you get the Unraid USB creator installed and opened on your system, one of the big things you need to do is make sure you're running it as administrator. So if you come here, you just need to right click if you're on Windows, run as administrator and hit yes. Once this opens up here, then we have a couple different options. And now is a good time, if you haven't already, to plug in your USB drive. So first thing we're going to do is choose the operating system. I'm going to go with the latest one. Then you can choose your storage. And this is where you will find your USB stick. Go ahead and select whatever you want to mount it on and hit next. Now I've already done this and created it. Once it creates that, you just need to plug it into your computer or your NAS that you just built and make sure that you go into the BIOS and boot it off the USB. Once it boots up, you'll be presented with a screen that basically allows you to log in, set your password, and I'll meet you on the other side and we'll walk through setting it up. Once you get through all the startup, one of the last steps it asks you to do is name the instance or give it a host name. In my case, I just left it as Tower. So all you need to do is just open up a browser on a computer that's on your network, go to tower.local. Now I've already set mine up. If it doesn't bring you to this page, it could bring you to the dashboard. It's just gonna give you information about your processor, different details about the hardware. If you go one step below that to the main, you'll actually see where you can set up your drive. Now most of yours will probably say unassigned. Now there's three different areas you need to pay attention to here. First of all, we're gonna be setting up our parity drive and we're gonna be putting the rest of the drives that we want in our storage array down below that. We're gonna set one of those drives aside and set it up down here as our cache pool. 
So that'll be done in three different areas. You may not see that. You may see something like unassigned. We'll just go ahead and assign them. And then when you're setting up your parity device, you can use two. That's super safe. It's gonna give you more uh, redundancy. But in my case, I'm gonna use one and you wanna use your largest drive then put everything else under here. Now I have a 256 MVME. That's solid state. So it goes without saying it's gonna be super fast and I wanna use that as my cache. If you don't have this here, you just need to hit add pool, slots, drop it down to one, hit add, and then it will give you the ability to drop this down and assign your MVME. Once that's done, you're ready to just go ahead and hit start, and that will go through the process of giving it parity and assigning all these devices. There is a chance that it may say that these need to be formatted and recognize you're gonna lose everything on those drives if you do need to format them. It will give you a prompt that you can just push the button here and it will reformat it. So with that, you just hit start and it should bring up that pool and then also start the parity process. Because I've set these up and I actually let the parity run, it took about, I think, 22 hours, maybe a little over 22 hours to complete. So it's gonna take a long time this whole array is i think 17 terabytes in total and my parity drive is 12 so you can see i've just added a little bit more but i know that that has redundancy built in some of the other things i wanted to show you really quickly were the shares uh, you can set up a share inside of this area here super easy to do all you need to do is hit add share once you do that name the share name hit done you can go to users you can add a user and then add them as a private share. So there's a lot of different things that you can set up through this. One of the areas I wanted to show you was right here, apps. This is pretty cool for Unraid. It's got a host of community applications that are just easy, one-click installs. Um, I'm not gonna go through all of these things, but I mean, for instance, if you wanted Plex on this, type in Plex, there's a whole host of different flavors of Plex you could choose and it's super easy just to install it. So just like that, that wraps up our series on building your own NAS. And if you're interested, I can do a deeper dive into Unraid or even True NAS Core. Let me know down below and I'd be happy to do that. I hope you found value in this. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing. My name's Hill Phantom and I'll see you next time.